it bugs me so much that that whole last scene of episode 19 of Apothecary Diaries just bugged me to no end. It's like, Jinchi, run, dude. <laughs> I know it's like all this like theatrics. It looks beautiful, the music and everything, and the slow walk is all cool and everything, but it's like, Mama's not dead. Run. <laughs> just run. Take her to a doctor. Go. But no, we have to do the whole cool, slow walk. Walks by Lacan, and Lacan's looking all shocked and everything. Man. What an episode. I honestly, a great episode. I, I think the great thing about it is that it ties in everything together, which I kind of assume was going to happen. I, I love how this writer loves to breadcrumb all these stories and then have them all kind of interlocked. I didn't really think they were going to have that many stories interlocked. <laughs> I mean, we have the whole seaweed incident. We have the whole too much salt incident. We have now also the brothers and the father that they lost. And that little thing, that that device that at some point they showed while Lacan was talking to Jinchi, that even came to the picture, which again was part of the whole metal making stuff, which good stuff. It, it, I love how it all kind of wraps together for this one incident, which yes, by all accounts is writing on the wall that Lacan is trying to kill Jinchi. Now, it's it's a little vague. It's a little vague that it seems like Lacan may not have known it was Jinchi, but I think he knows it's Jinchi. I, I think the shock at the very end from Lacan was because he didn't think Mama was going to pull it off. I think he let Mama go in there thinking that Mama was going to watch Jinchi die, but she actually saved him. <laughs> Uh, so good, so good. Uh, I'm jumping ahead of the, everything, but yes, opening up the episode, we get Mamo essentially being confronted by uh, Lihaku. Lihaku's gonna essentially put one other piece into the picture. And I do like this whole opening segment, because yes, it's goofy, <laughs> kind of calling off to the side, you know, talking a little bit, and then having Jinshi show up and be super jealous. But what was so cool about this beginning segment is it's showing how Mamo has changed. Mamo has essentially changed the way that she thinks about things. Again, we, we keep hitting in this thing where Mama makes a sort of a decision to mention something, but she doesn't have evidence. She's making conjecture. And Loman has been trying to drill into her head, do not speak based on conjecture. You're going to – essentially what she's always kind of equated to or at least what I've equated from her is that she's making decisions to point to somebody and that person could technically be innocent. She's essentially putting somebody's head – right on that plate so they can chop it off. To correct myself, it's usually Mau Mau trying to, in the mindset of, at least it won't be blood on my hands. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna allude to things, but I won't say it. That way it's not me making the decision, which, yes, it, it is true to her character. It's true to her character that she doesn't stick her head out there. She's just kind of pointing the direction so they can figure it out. Which is good. It is technically letting them do all the heavy work, do all the heavy lifting. She just kind of Based on her knowledge of the situation, she'll kind of point that direction. But yes, Jinshi gets filled on the situation, and he offers her a very rare medicinal thing from an ox. And it's interesting because now, looking back, it technically makes sense why Jinshi sort of pointed her in that direction. Yes, we're talking about something that involves ceremonial stuff. And as we find out with this episode, yes, Jinshi is involved with that. Which, yes, we've... We've indicated already. Mamo even herself kind of pointed out that Jinshi keeps being kind of purifying himself, so he might possibly be involved in that stuff. And yes, so he would probably want to know what's going on with her. But I think it's <laughs> there's like a, there's a side of me that it thinks it's Jinshi going, okay, this involves me. I'll have Mamo look into it. She's smart. But there's also a side of it that's almost playing into wanting to give her what she wants. Wait, you're not you're not excited. I, I think it's indicated by the fact that he's like, you're not excited. And she's like, well, I'm just doing whatever I'm told. I'm a servant. I'm a holy servant. <laughs> So he's like, okay, well, I'll, I'll make it a thing, and I'll even give her a prize, and that way she gets excited about the whole situation. Um, it is kind of funny in that regard, but yes, um, he, she looks into it, and eventually, yes, kind of pieces everything together, which I think was kind of interesting because it goes from essentially putting all three of these incidents together and then trying to find the tie-in because she's doing exactly what she told Lihaku to do. Here's all these coincidences but you have to find out how it all interlocks and if there's actually something in there. And yes, the center thing is Surye. Or at least one of the indications is this tall woman who smells like medicine, which, yes, is Surye. Now, again, Mama didn't want to point to Surye, and, but at the same time, it does technically piece into what I've kind of alluded to before. We've seen Surye walk towards where Lacan was, and additionally, the fact that Surye doesn't like Mama. And so my assumption was based on where she was walking, based on the fact that she knows about this wing, and based on the fact that she doesn't like Mama, 
that led me to believe that she probably likes Lacan. And so, yes, that would all kind of piece together in the idea that Sertier possibly did this whole thing with the pipe for Lacan. And yes, that would piece Lacan into the center of the mix. And yes, also having this whole thing where Lacan was really interested in these brothers, was was essentially pointing Jinshi towards these brothers. Now, the, the curious thing that I kind of it gravitated my mind is, yes, I think Lacan keeps going to Jinshi for the sake of trying to get close to Mamo. And it here recently had him just come out and say it. He was dancing around it for the longest time, but then he finally says it. I want you to give me back what I what I deserve. Give me back Mama. But it also sort of indicated that Lacan was sort of pushing Jinshi in the direction of all these different mysteries, which is odd to do. He he essentially opened up the door for Mama to figure it out, <laughs> which is odd. But it, it, side of me kind of wonders if possibly Lacan was trying to get Jinshi involved in all these incidents to pin it on him. So maybe possibly when the incident actually happened and Jinshi dies, it would be blamed on him and just malpractice on his own account. And nobody would look anywhere else because Jinshi was involved in everything. Which, yes, makes me sort of wonder if Lacan did not know that Jinshi was this highborn noble. Which, again, I think he did. He insinuated Jinshi at some point, I would never go after somebody like you because I can only count on one hand how many times somebody's done that or at least done that. He's indicating there that he knows that Jinshi is a very high-ranked person and implies that he possibly knows that Jinshi is a high-born noble. So I don't think that. But again, it, it is kind of odd that Lacan has always been pointing Jinshi towards all these incidences, which would culminate to the this event that happened in this episode, which is where this pillar falls on this high-born noble. But yeah, eventually Mama finds out about this whole pillar and everything. And that, that was the interesting thing because I'm thinking back on it, I don't recall where Mama gets the conclusion that even the whole things with the metal worker was involved as well. I think that was just that last thing that jumps in her head that makes her realize, oh, this is all one thing. I need to act now because if this thing also is, is applied to this, I need to go. I know that they mentioned that he did work on this specific thing, this, this, this thing that he crafted that was perfect for something. So I can see her making that conclusion, but I don't think she had time to think about it. It was like this thing that just jumped in her head and immediately said, that's the third thing. I got to go. So I, I do understand why I didn't go into full detail about what that was. And when we actually see it in action, this little piece of metal that's supposed to hold this pillar is like, that is the most shady thing possible. I don't know why anybody put that up there. But again, Lacan could have been involved, got it, got it done. And then it led to this. I, well, I guess he wouldn't be directly involved because then that would really put the blame on him immediately. But yeah, it was kind of odd because I remember back when Lacan was talking about the metal worker, he kept talking about how this, the way that he uses metal, he can shape things and create really interesting things. At the time, I was kind of wondering if it was like maybe crafting bullets or something like that. But this seems to be implying this one, this one thing that holds the whole pillar on, which again... If we're going back into the metals they were talking about, mixing metals in order to make it easily meltable, like quicker to be melted, it would make sense that something like that is not going to hold much weight. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, that's, that thing is literally built to break. And that makes perfect sense. But yeah. Mau Mau going over there. That was an incredible scene. Like that, the whole last part was insane <laughs> running up there. Obviously, the ceremony's happening. They're not going to let a servant in there. Uh, her basically... Oh, yeah, I guess you would stop me because you're in on it, aren't you? There's, a, there's somebody is trying to get somebody killed and you're in on it. That's why you're trying to stop me. Bam, right across the face. I was like, oh, dang, dude. Uh, that was not, that was not pretty. That, that is a club. That, <laughs> that can, that can give somebody a concussion. I am, I'm even surprised that she even stayed conscious. That, that was a nasty hit on her face. And then to have her kind of still stand up, kind of mention the idea that she meant to do that. Like, I'm going to cause a commotion. Hopefully it stops the ceremony. Fortunately, it doesn't seem like it is going to. And that's when Lacan shows up. And I, I, it's so funny because she even mentions it. Like, yeah, that's really convenient that he's here. And, it, and it, it's kind of one of those things where I think she's mentioning that based on the fact that she's she hates the fact that he's there. And it, and it sucks because it's almost like she's going to have to rely on him. That's what was going through my mind at the same time was like, oh, now she has to do something that she doesn't want to do. She One is the fact that she's even in presence of him. He's, she's never wanted to see him. She's never wanted to be near him. And here he is. And she can't just leave. She has to go there. 
And so she has to kind of stomach it. But still, it's like on Lacan's side, it's like I kind of like that he's there because he's literally instilling fear upon these guys. You hit this girl. And you know that look on his face is literally you hit my jewel. Like this is my jewel in front of me, the thing that I want so badly. And you struck it. <laughs> and those guys are like literally have terrified at the same time. But he can't say like you hit my daughter. How dare you? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so there's like that whole thing there of like this whole mixed emotion that's happening. One in, I'm happy that Lacan's there. One in, I don't want him near her mama. One in, mama was in the middle going, I just need to get in there. I can't run. Um, I hate that this, that this person's here. But at the same time, I need to focus on what I need to do. <laughs> but again, Lacan says, let her through. That's the weird thing. Lacan says to let her through. And again, we're assuming at this point, or at least all indication points to Lacan did this. Lacan is the one that put this all together. Why is he letting Mama through? Who could essentially stop this situation? Is it, again, th there's multiple things in my mind. The, my conclusion that I have right now is that Lacan did not know that Mama was going to stop him. He was letting Mama go in there to see this person die and not stop it. And again, I think he knew that was Jinchi. And so that would even be more devastating to Mama. And then he would be, she would be so broken that he'd be able to get her. So I think that's what really happened there. Yes, there is a chance that he didn't know that it was Jinshi and he was just letting Mama through because he just wants to do a favor to his daughter, just to kind of gain. He's trying to do things to help her just so that she'll like him. Like he's trying to get some, some sort of credits for her or again, get a favor and then she'll have to return that favor. But again, it, it's like odd that he lets her through because the assumption is that this is something that he put together. Why would he, why would he do that? He's, he's essentially messing up everything he's plotted. But again, I think it changes so much because it's Mao Mao. Because Mao Mao's there, he doesn't want to stop her. He wants to help her <laughs> because he just wants to get in good favor with her so much. But yeah, he lets her through. She rushes in there. And we all knew it was going to be Jinxi. Punches Jinxi out of the way. Thing comes collapsing down. And she gets nasty cut. <sighs> Discovers that it's Jinxi, but gets a nasty cut at the same time. So not only does she have like literally a concussion in her head because this club literally just jarred her brain. But additionally, yes, she's got she's bleeding out from her leg. Shocked, obviously, to see that it's Jinchi. Jinchi's shocked to see her trying to. It's, it's so funny because he's just trying to figure out what happened to her. Like, what it what happened to your face? <laughs> it's like she's bleeding out. This column fell. He nearly died. She's here in a ceremony room, which she shouldn't be. But he's just concerned about her face. Like, what happened to her? <laughs> Which, yes, is because he just cares for her so much. But the, the reveal of Jinchi wasn't a shock. I, I think they've been pretty much painting that for the longest time. But I think the, the more shock here is that Lacan was so involved here and how far Mama went for the situation. And I think it's ma mainly a snowball thing. I was told to do this. I'm going to fulfill this thing. The moment she gets in there, it's literally like I need to resolve this or my head's gone. Like I just entered a chamber I should never go into. I need to make sure that at least I don't die. <laughs> so I need to actually... I need to actually finish this and actually, and hopefully this thing actually falls. <laughs> There's an aspect of Mama going in there and going, oh, it, it never falls. I'm screwed now. <laughs> but no, it, it all culminates to one of the most beautiful scenes, but at the same time, the most frustrating scenes. Because it's like, Ma Jinchi immediately picks up Mama and starts walking out the door. She, she loses consciousness because she's like, got hit in the head. She's bleeding out. He walks her out the door and it's like this great, beautiful scene of him in a ceremony outfit, this highborn noble just walking out and this lowly servant in his hands, Mama. And it's such a beautiful scene. The music is fantastic. It just added to the emotion. It's such a beautiful, gorgeous scene. He's walking down the street, blood dripping. It's making this long trail. Again, it's, a, it's an incredible scene, but I, I, it sucks in my head. I'm constantly going, run run <laughs> she's not dead yet but she's gonna be dead unless you run <laughs> i don't know it it didn't look like it hit an artery so she's not bleeding that much but she could i mean it was technically bleeding quite a bit but not it wasn't an artery for sure because otherwise there'd be much more blood but that look on lacan's face we we have to talk about that look on Lacan. i pretty much got into it earlier but the look on lacan's face everybody's bowing because they all know this is a highborn noble Lacan is shocked. And it's like a shock, but it's also kind of a terrified. And so, yes, my immediate thought is I think this is Lacan shocked that it is that he was saved. Again, it could be multiple things. It could be that he's shocked because Mama pulled it off and Jinchi's alive. Again, he probably sent Mama in there thinking that she was going to fail. 
Like, there's no way she can make it in time. That thing's going to fall. But again, it could be, it could be that he was shocked it's Jinshi. Again, he could know that Jinshi is powerful, but not how powerful. Again, everything that Lacan has alluded to earlier about not facing off somebody like him, like I only can count on one hand how many times somebody's faced off against somebody of your rank. It could be that he just knows Jinshi is not just of this rank, that he's something higher. But how high? He could, again, not know that Jinshi is a highborn noble. And that could be why he's shocked. Because there is a sense of, like, terror in his face at the same time. And additionally, it could be the idea that Mama figured it out and he didn't die. That's the problem that's gonna he's going to face now. My act went through and now they know too much. But now, some, now there's going to be an investigation because he lived. Now he's going to know exact... Because I've been... I've been throwing hints at Jinshi. Like I said earlier, it's almost odd how much he's been throwing at Jinshi to essentially point out what he's doing. Again, having Mamo involved with investigating all this stuff. Now, technically, yes, definitely the metal worker was sent by him. I guess technically the seaweed incident and the sugar, the salt incident wasn't him because the salt incident was Jinshi's friend. Um, with the incident with the seaweed, that was somebody else came to him for that as well. So... It was only really the metal worker that Jinshi or Lacan got him involved with, but that's enough. Like he's been dropping way too many hints. And yes, he also has a reason. And then Lacan has been meeting with him and there, there's motive. Jinshi obviously knows there's motive for Lacan to kill him. But I do think there is an aspect that he's not going to be able to take down Lacan that easily. Like he's going to need hard evidence. And I think Mama does have it. But that, 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 that puts Lacan in a very interesting perspective because the one that holds the key to him being, yeah, have his head lopped off is somebody that he really badly wants. <laughs> so it just, it, it creates so many issues with this whole scenario. It's a, overall, the, the consequences of this episode is insane. And I love that about it. This is, this is, this episode has opened so many doors of possibilities, what direction it can go. And all in the middle of it is obviously Sare. Sore is obviously going to have to be questioned at this point. I don't think she's going to turn in Lacan, but I think Jinshi is going to know it's Lacan. It's just trying to find out how that all connects to Lacan is going to be the issue because it seems like, at least for the whole uh, burning incident and stealing the ceremonial devices, that was Sore. And unless they connect that, it's not going to work out. But anyways, what else do I have in this document? I just ran through this so quick. I think that's it. But uh, yeah. Looking forward to the next episode. I'm really curious where it's going to go from here or if it's just going to take a quick breather because that was a that was quite a big moment in this in this story. So I don't know. They might take a breather and, and not jump right into taking down the con, but I doubt it's going to be that easy. I, I, I really do think this is going to be an ongoing thing with the con. But anyhow, that's my thoughts on episode... 19. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what's the episode. Additionally, if you do the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content. And news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's premature. Additionally, follow the support channel more. I have a Patreon link, tips, links, your thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate it, it does. And y'all take care.